Hi there, in this video we will learn about the physical properties of amines. Well, talking about the primary amines, in general the lower aliphatic amines are gases. Whereas the primary amines with three or more carbons are liquid and higher amines are solid. And if we talk about these lower gaseous aliphatic amines, they usually have fishy odor. Now, if we talk about the color, well, the aromatic amines like aniline and aryl amines usually are colorless. However, they get colored on storage due to atmospheric oxidation. Next comes the most important physical property that is the boiling point. So, to understand boiling point, let's do one thing. Let's take three amines. One, a three degree amine. Second one, a two degree amine and the third one, a one degree amine. And if you see the number of carbons are same. So, these are the isomeric forms of the same amine. So, we have NN dimethyl ethanamine, we have N ethyl ethanamine and we have butanamine, right? So, the molar mass of all three of them is 73. But look at the boiling point. Yep, even though the molar mass of all three of them are same, it is 1 degree amine which has the highest boiling point of 350.8 Kelvin. This 2 degree amine has a boiling point of 329.3 Kelvin. And this 3 degree amine has a boiling point of 310.5 Kelvin. Now, why is that? The answer lies in hydrogen bonding. We know that when we talk about a primary amine, a primary amine has two hydrogens and one lone pair. Let me show a lone pair here, okay? So, this is let's say a lone pair, okay? So, one lone pair and two hydrogens are involved in hydrogen bonding. So, per molecule if you see, there are three hydrogen bondings which are possible. Whereas, for a secondary amine, let's see how many hydrogens are there. So, there is one hydrogen and one lone pair. So, you see that per molecule, how many hydrogen bondings are possible? Two. Whereas, if we talk about a 3 degree amine, well, there is no hydrogen which is present that can show hydrogen bonding because you know that how we write a 3 degree amine, isn't it? This is how we write a 3 degree amine. So, there is no hydrogen, no hydrogen bonding that means. So, zero hydrogen bonding is possible in a 3 degree amine. So, what can we say? We can say in nutshell that for amines with the similar molar mass and similar structure, Boiling point is proportional to the extent of the hydrogen bonding. This is because hydrogen bonding leads to significantly stronger intermolecular forces of attraction between the amines molecules. And uh, as a result, we need more energy to overcome these intermolecular forces of attraction and consequently the boiling point increases. And like we saw, extent of hydrogen bonding is maximum in 1 degree amine, then 2 degree and least in 3 degree amine. The order of boiling point is also the same where 1 degree amine has the highest boiling point and 3 degree amine has the lowest boiling point if we consider the similar molar mass. All right. Now, let's add another layer to the concept. Let's compare amines with alcohol. Look at this. We have ethanol and ethanamine. Okay, both have two carbons. One has a functional group which is alcohol, the other one has amine. But look at the boiling point. Both can show hydrogen bonding but boiling point of alcohol is 351 Kelvin and that of ethanamine is 290 Kelvin. Now, why is that? Well, the answer here lies with the electronegativity of these elements which are involved in hydrogen bonding, isn't it? So, look at this. So, here we have this nitrogen which has lower electronegativity as compared to that of oxygen, right? So, nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen and that results in what? Well, the hydrogen bond between amine molecules are weaker than between the alcohol molecules. As a result, what you see? Amines having lower boiling points than alcohols with similar molar mass. Okay, so the story is different if you compare amines with hydrocarbons because hydrocarbons can't show hydrogen bonding. The same can be observed from the data of the boiling point here. So, if you take two carbons, that means if you take an ethane, you have a boiling point of 184.1 Kelvin. That's pretty, pretty low. You can see it's minus 89 degrees Celsius, right? It's so low. But 
yeah, I mean, if you see the molar mass, yeah, we are appreciably decreasing the molar mass also. So, if you count the molar mass of ethanol, it is what? 46 gram per mole, right? If you look at the molar mass of ethanamine, it is 45 gram per mole and that of ethane is 30. So, yeah, appreciably low molar mass. So, yeah, maybe boiling point can be low. But even if you take propane, which has a very similar molar mass of 44 gram per mole, you can see that the boiling point is appreciably low. That is 231.1 Kelvin. This suggests that alkanes cannot show hydrogen bonding and hence the boiling point is going to be appreciably less even though you take the similar molar masses, right? Okay, now let's talk about the solubility of amines in water. It is observed that lower aliphatic amines are soluble in water because they can form hydrogen bonding with water molecules, right? You can observe that here R is very, very small. Maybe it can be a methyl or an ethyl. So, hydrogen bonding is possible because of which you will see that lower aliphatic amines are soluble in water because of the hydrogen bonding with water. But what if, if this alkyl group becomes bulkier, you can see that the solubility decreases with the increase in the molar mass of the amine. So if this alkyl group becomes larger and larger, what happens? They are hydrophobic. Remember, these alkyl chains are hydrophobic. So since they are hydrophobic, they will try to repel water molecules. And hence, it will become very difficult to show hydrogen bonding with water. So yes, the solubility of amines for these larger aliphatic amines becomes difficult in water. But hey, what if we are talking about lower aliphatic amines in solvents like alcohol or maybe if you remove hydrogen from here and replace it with R, it becomes ether. So yes, in lower aliphatic amines, just like what we saw in water, the hydrogen bonding is possible and because hydrogen bonding is possible, the lower aliphatic amines are soluble in solvents like alcohol and ether. But what if we make this R group big enough? So in what solvents these larger aliphatic amines should be soluble in? So like we discussed, these alkyl groups are hydrophobic. So they need a solvent that is now loving towards these alkyl groups, right? So the solvent that can be used in the cases of these higher aliphatic amines when this alkyl group is bulky enough is benzene. Okay, now let's test your skills with this question. Check this out. Which of the following should be least volatile? You have this propenamine, you have NN dimethyl methanamine, you have N methyl ethanamine, and you have a propane. All right. And what has been asked? Least volatile. Pause the video and do attend this question. All righty. I hope you could do it. So we know that volatility, if we talk about, it is inversely proportional to the boiling point, right? And boiling point is directly proportional to the extent of hydrogen bonding. So if we talk about the hydrogen bonding, it's going to be maximum in one degree amine. And which one is one degree amine? The first one out here, you got it. So this first one is going to have the highest extent of hydrogen bonding and hence the highest boiling point. And if the boiling point is highest, the volatility is going to be minimum. And that is what was asked in the question, least volatile. So first is going to have the least volatility. So while matching, be careful. First is an option C. So C becomes the answer to this question.